Okay, today we're going to have a short video about some of the structures of a muscle and how it's built, okay? Most muscles, almost all muscles as a matter of fact, attach to two different bones. That's how they work. They have one where they attach and use it as an anchor. You'll have a tendon at each end that attaches directly to the bone, okay? Now, each muscle will have a bone that it anchors to, one that's not going to move. At the other end of this muscle would be another bone, but that other bone is going to be on the other side of a joint, like here with your bicep in your arm. It has an anchor point at the top of your humerus. Then it goes down here, and the tendon on the other end anchors in your lower arm. So when that muscle shortens, it pulls those bones of the lower arm into a new position. Okay? So by shortening or contracting that muscle. Now let's take a look at what the muscle looks inside that bundle. Okay? Because this tendon is going to spread out and kind of merge itself into a covering for the outside of the muscle. That muscle covering is what's called an epimysium. Now, if we break down that word, it makes pretty good sense. Mysium is a covering on something. Okay? So it stands up for a covering on a muscle. Epi means outer or upper. Okay? So this is the outside covering on the muscle. The epimysium just wraps the whole muscle, keeps it protected and safe. Okay? Allows it to do its own chemical thing inside. Okay? Inside that epimysium are these bundles of muscle fibers. These bundles are called fascicles. Now, this one, it's going to pull that one out to show us one fascicle at a time. Inside that are muscle fibers. Each fascicle is surrounded by another covering that keeps it separate from all the other clumps of muscle inside the big muscle. That new covering, the end word, mysium, is a covering on a muscle. But this one is what's called a perimysium. Peri means in between or around. Okay? So that perimysium surrounds each fascicle, each bundle inside here is a perimysium. Okay? Now each of those things has inside of it a grouping of muscle fibers. You can see them in here. Each of these is the cutoff end of a muscle fiber. So what this basically is, is a group of what we could think of as wires. Okay? Now they're actually cells, they're not metallic, but these are bundles that would look like a bundle of wires, a big cable full of wires is what this is. Now each one of these individual cables is a muscle cell or a muscle fiber. Now muscles are kind of complicated cells because what they do is instead of separating like in mitosis where we go, okay, one cell grows, split in half and you got two, well what occurs in a muscle is that it doesn't do the splitting in half part. They stay together, two nuclei, two bunches of cell stuff, but they don't completely separate. And this becomes important as we look into this inside of the muscle fiber, okay? Each muscle fiber is surrounded by its own, yet another covering, because we have to keep them separate from each other so we can control them separately. Nerves will control muscle fibers one at a time, which is a very, very important thing that we'll talk about later, okay? The endomysium surrounds each muscle fiber. All right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to zoom in on this one muscle fiber, okay? Here's the big group. This is the fascicle full of muscle fibers, and we're going to pull one out, okay? Now, notice that it's kind of striped. This is a zoom in, and we see what these stripes are. These are different segments. They're called sarcomeres. We don't have to worry about that word too much. But each segment here is called a sarcomere. Now, each one of those actually has two different kinds of cables or filaments inside of it. They're called myofilaments, which myo refers to muscle. Okay? They're called microfilaments sometimes. But these myofilaments, these bundles of sarcomeres, we're going to zoom in now on those. Because notice, we've got some thick red ones there and some thin blue ones. That becomes very important on how the muscle actually works. Let's go ahead and scroll down and we'll zoom in a little further. Okay? Now this is zooming in on one sarcomere. This is one set of red bars and one set of blue bars. Okay? Now notice they're different. There's a set of blue ones that surround each and every red one. This is very, very important because this is the chemical. This is way down to the chemical level here. This is zoomed in even closer. These are these big fat red dudes here. These are the blue dudes. Okay? And what we've got going on is we have some what are called myosin filaments or fibers and actin. Again, not vocab terms, but things that you need for this discussion. Okay? Now, what goes on is, is when a nerve sends a signal, 
to this muscle fiber that it needs to contract. What it's going to do is it's going to tell the endomysium that surrounds this muscle fiber. It's going to say, okay, open up. Let the chemicals flow. The chemical that we're talking about is calcium. Okay? Calcium ions come flowing in to these sarcomeres. And it does some weird things. Now notice, that's calcium. Same thing that's in your bones and we get from drinking milk and from other sources. Calcium is important, not just for strong bones, but for healthy muscles too. Because they're what helps us make these things contract. Because what's going to happen is, is when the calcium floods into these guys, it's going to run into these myosin fibers, these red ones. And basically it's going to cause them to bloat up. Okay? Because what's going to happen is all these little attachments here on the side, these are like little hooks. And what's going to happen is these guys over here are going to stand up and grab the blue fiber and pull it like that. And these on this end are going to stand up and grab this blue fiber and pull it like that. Now what happens is, is when both of them work together, the red one, the myosin, pulls the actin and pulls them toward each other. So in effect what it does is it shortens the entire sarcomere. Now if we scroll back up here, think about this. If you've got one thing here and it goes short, this one gets shorter, this one gets shorter, and all the way down this line, they keep getting shorter and shorter and shorter. What's that doing to the whole muscle? Contracts it, it tightens it, and shortens it, and it makes the bones move. Okay? So that's how actual muscle contraction works. Now, here's the thing. Remember when I said that the nerves controlled each individual fiber here? We could say, hey, fire this one, but don't fire these other guys near it. Why is that so important? If we had our, oops, there we go, nope, there. If we just had one nerve that went to the whole muscle, what would happen when we turned it on? If we attached the nerve just to the epimysium, to the outside of the whole muscle, so that we said, hey, turn it on, flood the calcium, it would flood all of this. What would happen to the whole muscle? Contract, just as hard as it could. Every single muscle fiber in it would contract at the same time. Is that how we want our muscles to work? Either on, off, on, off, and that's the only choices we have? That's not a good thing. So what we have is we have nerves that run inside this to control them so we can fire just a few so that we can gently move something and we can gently pick something up. Because otherwise, if we didn't have all that fine nerve control, we'd be either on or off, and there wouldn't be any in between. Okay? So that's why the nerves control the endomysium, the inside. All right, that's all we need today about the structure and function of a muscle.